Hey guys, B Dog here. Um, I just wanted to give a quick, quick tips to help you succeed at OT because uh, I actually really like OT. It's the only time I can. I'm a fully uh, free to play player, and it's the only one where I can get up into bracket four and get the top reward and also get rare car, a rare card, or a chance at a rare card. And and so I actually really like OT. Um, as you guys know, it's it's based off a lot of your own skill to get the wins. You've got to be able to get buckets, uh, but the you can shoot yourself in the foot if you don't set up properly or set up correctly. And so what I want to do is quickly go over how to prep for OT so that you can you can not guarantee wins, but you can all you can increase your chance to win tremendously if you set up correctly. Okay. So I'm just going to go over my setup and what I'm doing to prep for OT and what I do when I before I even join a game. Because if you, you can actually not get buckets if you don't set yourself up correctly. And so the prep before each game is key. So I'm going to go over that real quick. Uh, number one is team. And so um, the one thing about overtime is that uh, you're going to get a three right away. And so... Uh, right off the bat, almost 80% of the time, you'll get an open three. So usually it's your point guard coming down with the three. Hitting that three bucket right away has been my best uh, way to succeed because if you get that three, all you have to do is defend against the two. So uh, hit the three, and then the only thing you have to do is defend against three pointers for the opponent because... Even a two, they won't win. You don't want to get a tie, but just defend against a three because you don't want them to score bottom line. So if you play good D, then you're going to get the win if you make that three. But if you only defend against a three and they hit a two, you're still in good shape. So I always try to go for that three right away. But there's different methods, right? There's the pick and roll method where you're using your post and working through your post a lot. I just like that three method. And so what you'll see is I've got my point guard at maxed out three. I've, whoops, I've got Jordan. Ah, sorry guys. MJ at maxed out three and LeBron at maxed out three. So sorry, this thing keeps scrolling. Um, I've got those guys all offense and they're just my go-to scorers, right? My posts are my defense. So power forward center, max out my defense. Uh, this method, I've gotten top reward free to play every time on OT. Sorry, this thing scrolls fast, but, um, and it keeps scrolling past them, but that's my setup. And I do that, get a three right away method, um, where things become critical. So you can set up your team, however you score. So you might work through your posts and you set offense through posts and that's okay. I just, uh, for my own play style and getting that first three ball, this is the setup that's worked for me, but you can use your own method and your own players how you like. Um, getting into the event, so again, get your team how you like it. That's great. Oh, the other the other key thing I like to do before any event is sometimes my favorite scores are not my top powered players. In this case, they are. But what I do is any player that I'm not using as my go-to team, I take off the mentors because sometimes your max power at that position is a player you're not using. So if you take off the mentors off of those players, you're going to get better opponents. So lower score opponents, lower power opponents. So make sure you do that. Any players you're not using, remove your mentors because if you have a, like I said, you're a higher position player that has a mentor on, that'll affect the opponents you play and how high their power is. So that's another quick step. Note that one down. Getting into the event, okay? So I've got my team set, as I've shown you. Um, it's always about hardcore, and it's always about streaks to get that top reward. So it's all about getting streaks, really, in this event. Style bonus doesn't matter too much unless you want to move up this board faster, which is useful as well. Uh, but again, you really want the streaks if you want top reward. So um, just quickly, so method here things to pay attention to. So my scores, my go-to scores are my Magic Johnson, my Michael Jordan, and my LeBron James. Specifically, my Magic Johnson and my LeBron James, they're my shooters for sure. So I'm looking at their power right away. So my Magic is at 8780 and my LeBron is at 11, 11 103. So 
looking at those powers, what I'm doing when I'm re-rolling is if I click on Nemo as my opponent, and I don't have multiple op opponents yet, but for my scores, I'm looking at the matchup power uh, of the opponent of the positions um, on the opposite team. So, for example, my point guard, that magic is at 16,000. That's a mismatch not in my favor. So my magic won't score or make his shots as much. My LeBron is actually higher than this LeBron. So my LeBron will be the scorer because I have the, the mismatch um, to my advantage. Pay attention to your scores, right? So you could have the rest of the team overpowering your other positions. But if your score overpowers their score, or if your score um, overpowers the opposite position of his, um, then you can make buckets better. That's definitely a crucial step because otherwise you will miss more buckets. NBA 2K does gauge your power level and your matchups per position. So if you're overpowered at the position you want to score with, you're likely going to have more misses. Whereas if you have the higher power, you'll get more greens and more buckets. So big step with that. That's one thing I'm paying attention to is my favorite positions. Secondly, as I click back, you know, as I as I'm re-rolling and re-rolling, looking for those good matchups, I'm also avoiding teams that have like a Steph Curry at point guard. Um, or even a Michael Jordan at shooting guard sometimes. I found that clutch, he'll just hit those full court buzzer beaters, MJ Will or Steph Curry Will. So I tend to try and avoid those if I can, and that also helps get a you know helps get higher probability of winning. Um the other thing is I you can also pay attention to overall team power level. So up above you've got the 10,920. 10, Do they have boosts? Do they have power boosts? Sometimes I avoid those. If you want to get a good win, like if you want to get your best shot at winning, here are my notes, right? So uh, pay attention to your matchups on your scores. So pay attention to the powers on your scores. Pay attention to the overall team power because you'll find a fluctuation of like a thousand. So you can get some lower team powers with no power boosts. That will help as well. Uh, and then that prep beforehand, setting up your team correctly, however your play style is. But I've I've always had success with the defense on power forward and centers. Um, and then there's just the gameplay. You've got to be good at gameplay. So once you finally do get the the best odds of winning how, by setting up your team this way and looking for the right opponent, that's half the battle. Once you get in the game, you've got to play good defense. You've got to get your buckets. So however you get your buckets, but you can shoot yourself in the foot if you don't go into the right game. And you can find a lot easier opponents and a lot easier matchups that you can get buckets with if you pay attention to some of these things. So I hope that helps. It's rapid fire, it's really fast, but there's some really key things to note in there. And I can give an example once the event starts. But those are huge things to pay attention to that can definitely increase your odds of winning and getting a bucket. And that's really what's most important in this event. So good luck, and I will catch you guys later.